Hey mathematics learners, welcome to Distance Learning with Lee, where I make learning mathematics super easy. On today's video tutorial, we are going to be going through question 4 of the grade 12 mathematics paper 2 November 2020 exam. This exam or this question um, assesses, it assesses your understanding on obviously circles and analytical geometry. Okay, it checks to see um, whether you understand the formulas as well as the concepts you are supposed to use when you're working with a circle that is centered at the origin as well as a circle that is not centered at the origin. You will also find in this question instances where you have to use the distance formula. You will also be tested in this question on the properties of lines that are perpendicular uh, what do you know about lines that are perpendicular and things like that so this section on the whole as a whole um covers analytical geometry i've made great summary videos on um analytical geometry where i go through um gradients um equations of a line inclination of a line as well as circles in analytical geometry on my channel so make, so make sure that you do check out those videos um, if you haven't gone through or studied um, analytical geometry and once you've done that you'll be able to answer um, this question so we're actually going to get started right By reading the question and before that just make sure that you actually copy down this question you try it on your own first um, and then once you've done that play the video to check and see if you understood the concept. okay so let's read the question question 4 says we are given um, point M with the coordinates negative 3 and 4 is the center of the large circle and a point on the small circle having center 0 and 0. From N with the coordinates negative 11 and P, a tangent is drawn to touch the large circle at T with NT parallel to the y-axis. NM is a tangent to the smaller circle at M with MOS a diameter. Okay, 4.1 wants us to determine the equation of the small circle. So you're just going to quickly analyze all the information that is given to us. We are given the big circle here and this big circle is obviously not centered at the origin. And the center of this big circle is at negative 3 and 4. And we're also given the small circle that is centered at the origin and the center of this small circle is at the origin which is point zero and zero we are asked to determine the equation of the small circle okay in our question 4.1 so when we're working with obviously a circle that is centered at the origin we know that we use the general formula r squared which is equal to x squared plus y squared okay we are told that point m is a point on the small circle so we are just going to simply substitute that point into our equation to get what the equation of our small circle is going to be our point m has the coordinates negative 3 and 4 so we're going to substitute that into our equation x is equal to negative 3 all squared plus y is equal to 4 all squared okay negative 3 all squared is equal to 9 plus 4 all squared is equal to 16, that is equal to 25, therefore our r squared is equal to 25, making the equation of our small circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. Question 4.2, determine the equation of the circle centered at m in the form of x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared which is equal to r squared okay so 4.2 they want us to determine the equation of the big circle in the and put that equation in the form of x minus a all squared plus y minus b 
O squared, which is equal to R squared, right? We know that for our big circle, the center for our big circle is negative 3 and 4. We know that, obviously, um, when we're working with a circle that is not centered at the origin, we put we start off with the general equation of x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared, which is equal to r squared. And that is simple because that was given to us, right? We know that the x minus a as well as the y minus b is the x and the y coordinates of our center point, okay? What I always do is that I basically want to write the y and the x coordinates of my center point in the form of x minus a as well as y minus b. So that is what I'm going to do here, right? So my x coordinates for um, the center of the big circle is x is equal to negative 3 and the y coordinates of the center of a big circle is y which is equal to 4 okay when you move the negative 3 to your left hand side you get x plus 3 which is equal to 0 and when you move the positive well, the positive 4 to the um, left hand side you get y minus 4 which is equal to 0 right and at this point, we can see that we have the x and the y coordinates of our center of our big circle in the form of x minus a and y minus b. So at this point, you just substitute or you plug that into the equation, right? And you have x plus 3 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared, which is equal to r squared. Okay, at this point we see that we are not done, okay, because we still need to get the value of our r. So how do we get the value of our r? We get the value of our r by getting another point that is on our big circle. So what is that other point that is on our big circle? We are told that point T or our line NT as our tangent to our big circle Okay, so the line NT is a tangent to our big circle and the point T touches the big circle. Okay, so we need to basically get the coordinates of our point T and substitute them into the equation that we have here to get what the equation of our big circle is going to be, the final equation of our big circle. So how do you get the coordinates of T? All right. We are told that the line NT is parallel to the y-axis, right? So, by then telling us that the line NT is parallel to the y-axis, it means that the line NT is a straight line, okay? So, it's a straight line from N going to T. And because it's a straight line, what does it mean? It means that the x-coordinate on this line remain constant, right? So because we know that the x coordinate of our n is negative 11, that means that the x coordinate of our t is also going to be negative 11. What about the y point? What about the y coordinate? Okay, because we know that the line nt is parallel to the y axis, it's a straight line. If we were to draw a line that is parallel to the x axis, going from your point M to the point T, that would mean that the Y coordinates of our T would be the same as the Y coordinate for our M. Okay, so if I were to draw a straight line from the point M to the point T, right, and that straight line is parallel to the X axis, that means that the Y coordinates of M would be the same as the Y coordinate of T because then in this case as well, our y coordinates will remain constant on this. Okay, so our y coordinates for t will be 4. So now that we have the x and the y coordinates of our point t, we can simply substitute these values into the equation here. So we know that the point t is negative 11 and 4. So when we substitute these coordinates into our equation we get negative 11 plus 3 all squared plus your y which is 4 minus 4 all squared is going to be equal to your 
r squared. Negative 11 plus 3 all squared is equal to 64 plus 4 minus 4, which is 0, all squared is 0, and that is equal to your r squared. Therefore, our r squared is going to be equal to 64. Making the equation of our big circle, x plus 3 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 64. Question 4.3. Determine the equation of nm in the form of y, which is equal to nx plus d. So we need to determine the equation of this line, which is the tangent to our small circle in the form of y, which is equal to mx plus d. So what do we see here? Usually, the first thing you'll think is that because we are given two points on the line, we can just simply use, okay, so we first use the we would first use the gradient formula which is m which is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Once we have the gradient, we substitute it into this equation of y minus y1, which is equal to m, x minus x1 with another point on the line to get our equation in the form of y which is equal to mx plus c, right? But we cannot do that in this instance. Why can't we do it in this instance, right? We can't do this because we do not have the y coordinate of our endpoint, right? So it'll make it basically impossible for us to get um, the formula or the, the, the equation of the line in M in the form of y, which is equal to mx plus c, because we'll have just too many unknowns. What we know is that if you draw a line from the center to the tangent of a circle, that line will be perpendicular to the tangent, right? So if you draw a line from the center to the tangent, the line will be perpendicular to that tangent, right? So line OM is perpendicular to our line in M, okay? And if we get the gradient of our line, OM, we'll be able to get, to get the gradient of our line in M because we know that if we've got two lines and they are perpendicular to each other, the product of those gradients is equal to negative one so all that we need to do is just get the gradient of our line o m because we already have two points right the first point is our line o i mean our point o which has the coordinate zero zero and our second point is our m which has the coordinates negative three and four okay so i said that our point o has the coordinates zero zero and our point m has the coordinates negative three and four so if we just use the gradient formula, we can calculate the gradient of our line OM, right? So the gradient of our line OM is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, okay? I've basically redrawn our line M, our OM here so that you see what I'm doing, okay? So our y2 is equal to 4. So I like labeling my points. This is our 1. This is our point 2. Our y2 4 minus our y1, which is 0. All over our x2 is negative 3 minus your x1, which is 0. Making the gradient of our line OM equal to 4 over 3. We mentioned that our line OM is perpendicular to our line NM. Okay, and because we know that, we know that the of the gradients of this, these two lines should be equal to negative 1, right? So the gradient of, right? So since our line OM is perpendicular to the line NM, the gradient of our OM multiplied by the gradient of our line NM is equal to negative 1. We've already calculated the gradient of our line OM to be negative 4 over 3. We just need to get the gradient of our line NM. Therefore, if you make the gradient of NM a subject of your, form, of your formula, you have negative 1 divided by negative 4 over 3, which is equal to the gradient of our line NM is equal to 3 over 4. So now that we find the found the gradient of our line in M, right, we just need another point on our line in M, right? 
and another point on our line in M as the point M and we can use the equation y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 because we already know the gradient okay so y minus y1 our y1 is going to be y minus the y1 which is 4 which is equal to the gradient of our line in m we found it to be 3 over 4 x minus our x1 which is minus 3 okay Simplify this equation, which is y minus 4 is equal to 3 over 4, x plus 3. And that is going to be y is equal to 3 over 4. Multiply that in. 3 over 4, x plus 9 over 4 plus we take the 4, the negative 4 to the right hand side, which is plus 4, giving you the equation of 3 over 4x plus 25 over 4. 9 over 4 plus 4 is equal to 25 over 4. Alright, so now we've determined the equation of our line nm in the form of y, which is equal to mx. Next question, we need to calculate the length of SN. Okay, so we're going to start off by just drawing a line so that you guys see where our SN is. So that is our line SN. And we need to calculate the length of SN, right? So we already know this. To calculate the length of SN, this is simple. We just use the distance formula. But to be able to use the distance formula, we need both the coordinates of S as well as the coordinates of N, right? We are missing a Y coordinate for our, um, our point N, and we are missing the X and the Y coordinate of our point S. How do we get the Y coordinate of our point N? Okay, in question 4.3, we calculated the equation of our line in M, right? And we see that N is on the line in M. So what we can do is we can take the equation that we ob obtained of our line in M and we can substitute the X value into that equation to get what our Y value of our N is going to be. So let's do that. So this is 4.4. Okay. Um, we need to basically calculate the length of Sn. We already know that for we found the equation of our line in M, right? And the equation of our line in M is equal to y is equal to 3 over 4x plus 25 over 4, right? And our point N is on our line in M, right? So we can just substitute the X coordinate, okay? We know that the point N has a point neg a negative 11, NP. We can just substitute this X coordinate into that equation to get what the Y coordinate of our N is going to be, right? So Y is equal to 3 over 4, your x is negative 11 plus 25 over 4. Simply punch that into your calculator and see what you get. So it's 3 over 4 times negative 11 plus 25 over 4. And that is equal to negative 2, right? Therefore, your N coordinates is negative 11 and negative 2. So now we need to calculate the S, right? We need to get the S coordinates, right? So we found that our N is a negative, is a negative, is negative 11 and negative 2, right? But we need to calculate our S. How do we calculate the S coordinate? If you look at our line 
MOS, the diameter of our circle. What do you guys see? Is there a light bulb moment coming on? Okay. When we look at our line MOS, right, we are told that MOS is the diameter, right? And our point O is the midpoint of our line MOS, right? Our point O is the midpoint of our line MOS with M and S on either side. So if we use the midpoint formula, we will be able to calculate the coordinates of S. Do you guys still remember what the midpoint formula is? This is the formula that you use to calculate the midpoint of a line. Okay, so let's just apply that and see how far we get. Okay, so I've basically redrawn the line showing you guys what we're working with, right? We know that the point O is the midpoint, right? We know that the midpoint formula says that your x1 plus your x2 all over 2 and y1 plus y2 all over 2, right? We already know what the midpoint is, right? So if we take this, right, we know that the x, the midpoint of this line, the x coordinate of the midpoint of the line is 0, right? And our x1 are always labeled at my 1, that is your 2. Your x1 is negative 3 plus your x2 is the coordinate that you're looking for. I'll just leave that as s all over 2, okay? And when you take that from the formula, right, we already know that the midpoint of our y coordinate, the midpoint, our y coordinate of our midpoint is 0, and that is equal to if you take the y1 value, which is 4, plus the y2, which is y all over 2. Okay, if you simplify this, 0 times 2 is equal to 0 minus 3 plus x, therefore you've got 0, which is equal to minus 3 plus x. And your x is equal to positive 3. And sharp, 0 times 2 is 0, which is equal to 4 plus y. And your y is equal to negative 4. Right? So, guys, we have calculated the coordinates of our s to be your 3 and your negative 4. I'm just going to quickly do a recap of what we did. So in question 4.4, we need to calculate the length of our line SN, right? So I started off by just putting down the line SN there, right? And we know that to calculate the length of a line, we just use the distance formula. And to be able to use the distance formula, you need two coordinates, right? At this stage, we cannot just simply use the distance formula because we do not have the coordinates of our s and we also do not have the coordinates, the y coordinates of our n, right? So we need to get the coordinates of s and the y coordinates of our n, right? So what we did is to get the y coordinates of our n, we just substituted the x value into the equation that we calculated for our line in M, right? And when we substituted the x value into that equation, we found that our y coordinate of our n is negative 2, right? So we call, we already have now the coordinates of n. So now we need to calculate the coordinates of s, right? And we see that when you look at our line M O S, right? Points M and S are on either side of our circle at equal um, ends of our circle. And our point O is at the center of our circle, right? So in that case, we have a light bulb moment that, oh, I can actually use the distance formula to calculate the coordinates of S. And that is exactly what we, 
the midpoint formula, excuse me, to calculate the coordinates of f. And that is exactly what we did. We used the midpoint formula and we just substituted the values that we are given. Right? We already know that point O is the midpoint of our line MOS. And we substituted our x1 and x2 into our equation, x2 being what we're looking for and y2 being what we're looking for, which are the coordinates of s. And we found that our s is negative 4. And now we can use the distance formula to calculate the length of our sn. Right. So when we use the distance formula, the distance formula says that sn is equal to the square root of x minus x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1, right? I like labeling my points. So you can say that this is my one and this is my second point. And we just substitute that into our equation. Okay, guys, simply punch that into our calculator. You find that your Sn is equal to 10 square root 2, which is equal to 14.5. One four units. Question four point five. If another circle with center B that has the coordinates negative two and five and radius K touches the circle centered at M, determine the values of K in correct two one decimal place. Whoa, this question guys is really, 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 really um, it is tough, a bit tough, and it's vague. It's not specific as to what they really want you to do. Um, because honestly speaking, um, you can have um, the circle that has the center B touch the circle with the center M here. You can have that circle touch uh, it here. Like, it's vague, right? And because of the vagueness, the answers can basically vary, okay? So what I'm thinking is that if you, okay, so if you take the circle with the center B and it touches the circle with the center M here, so basically I draw the circle here, okay? And this is the center of this circle with um, the center B with the coordinates negative 2 and 5. And obviously, this is our circle with our coordinates um, negative. This is our circle with our co uh, center coordinates negative 3 and 4, right? Okay. So this is our point M, and this is our center for our new circle, right? We are told that the the blue circle, so I've basically color coordinated it, so I make this a bit easier. So the circle, the blue circle, we are told that the radius is k, okay? So I'm just going to do that. The radius is k. Okay, I'm just going to say that it's K, okay, and we already know that our green circle, our radius is 8, and we calculated this radius in our question 4.2. Okay, we found the radius of that circle, our green circle, to be 8. Okay, so I'm going to put that down. If we calculate the distance from the center of our green circle to the center of our blue circle, we will be able to determine what our k value is. Okay, so how do we determine our distance from m to b? We just simply use the distance formula. Okay. So to get your BM, you just use your distance formula. We already know the we already know the coordinates of our point B, and that is we already know the coordinates of our center 
for our new circle as negative 2 and 5 and the coordinates of our original big circle as negative 3 and 4. Okay, simply use the distance formula and substitute these points. That's my 1 and that is my point 2. We know that the distance formula is x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Simply substitute, you get minus 3 minus minus 2 all squared plus 4 minus 5 all squared. Okay, and then we get that our BM is equal to the square root of 2 units, right? So you're going to fill that in. So you found that our BM is equal to 2 units, square root of 2, that's there. And then you found it to be square root of 2, of 2, right? Okay, so now we can see that obviously we said that from the green, the center of the green circle, I mean the radius of our green circle is equal to 8, the radius of our blue circle is equal to k, and we found that the distance from the b to the m is equal to the square root of 2, right? So from here we can just simply say that um, 8 is equal to square root of 2 plus k, right? So that is my 8. That's my 8 here. That's the 8. The radius of the green circle is equal to the square root of 2 plus k, right? And if you make the k the subject of the formula, you're going to have 8 minus square root of 2, which is equal to k. Don't forget to like and comment um, on the video and just, you know, talk to me and tell me how you found the video. Was it helpful? Did you enjoy it? And um, that's it, guys. I'll see you guys on my next upload. Goodbye.